Nerds. So a few days ago on, I think it's the community tab. I'm not really fully sure how this works in the YouTube realm. I posted a video on like my YouTube story, think Instagram story, but for YouTube about the Pro 3, asking what you want to know about it and whatnot. I got a lot of stuff asking about Eurorack integration. Cool, but I wouldn't really dive into that too much just because it's not something that I'm really into. I'd rather just use the Eurorack itself. I'm sure you can get some cool creative results, but there's a lot of modulation on here already that didn't need me to go and dive into the modular world. Um, but another thing I got mentioned a lot was about the wavetable oscillator. Also mentioning kind of some softer, more calm sounds, not just like crazy insanity. And then doing some more LFO tricks. I feel like I'm a LFO card tricker dealer thing. So this also has some really cool tricks up its sleeve when it comes to the LFO as well. So let's go ahead and listen to some of those. Actually, check out this wavetable here. This wavetable is called uh, sequential. Reason being, if you play it, right, cool, nothing crazy, maybe an octave down. What's that? What'd you say? It literally says sequential. And this is one that got brought to my attention by Red Means Recording, Jeremy. And uh, he, <laughs> it took me forever to get to this, but basically it's this here, an up ramp of an LFO being sent to the shape mod. Cause if I don't have this here, I know this is totally not at all what we we're gonna talk about, but I just thought this was really cool. So here, that's the wavetable. Each wavetable, oh, you know what? Yeah, let's talk about the wavetable oscillator. So each shape of the wavetable oscillator has, I believe, 16 positions. So listen to this. If I just hold down the note, position one. This is all one wavetable. That's it, from zero to 255. That's so tight. Do any of these others say anything else? No, they don't. Not that I know of at least. So the wavetable's cool. This Pro 3 really makes me want the Pro 2. The main difference is from what I can understand when it comes to the Pro 3 versus the Pro 2 is that the Pro 2 has four oscillators that are all digital, where this has two VCOs, voltage controlled analog oscillators, plus one third wavetable, that made no sense, a third wavetable oscillator. And this wavetable is where it leaves me wanting more because on the Pro 2, you get four of these. I don't know if it's this exact same wavetable. I don't have the Pro 2, I've always wanted it. And it's like, who would design a four voice paraphonic digital synth? Like that is the weirdest. That reminds me of like mono machine weird, like a monophonic digital thing. Like what? But because of those limitations, you come up with some crazy creative things. So with this having this wavetable here, it sounds really good for being digital because you can go into some weirder sound. For example, if we go back to that sequential one, check. Listen to this, like, lower end. Right there. And if you were to add some more bass from, let's say, one of the analog VCOs. Ooh. Do a little pluckiness. If you're like, man, this dude cannot play the keys, you are correct. You know, it's funny, my most used patch on this thing um, is an initialized patch. Oh, thank you everybody on the original Pro 3 video, this one where I said I it sucks to have to reset the patch this way, but it's literally down, latch is a basic program. But this is literally my most used patch. It's just a triangle wave down an octave. And if you want to get really bassy, I just go down a second octave. 
And the reason I love this patch so much is because there's still like a little bit of a bite or a hiss to the oscillator. You hear it? It's like a zzzz. I mean, you can fight this off with a little bit of cutoff. You don't like that pop sound, a little bit of attack. And honestly, if you're on your cell phone or a laptop right now, you probably do not hear this at all. And this, you probably hear this. And I, that's why I like this so much because this has a little bit of a bite and a sizzle to it, which helps it just cut through a mix when it comes to listening to your music on speakers that are not studio monitors. So if you go to an, uh, a car with crappy speakers or a cell phone or a laptop, the bass is gone, your kick might be gone. This allows you to still kind of get the idea and hear the sound of a bass within your track. I used to always have to just use a sine wave and then add a little bit of a bit crush on like a send and that's what would allow my sine waves to cut through. But the fact that I can just do this is awesome. But uh, yeah, the wavetables, focus Enrique, focus. So the wavetables get really cool and they're so nice when it comes to making softer sounds, whatever that might mean to you. So I'm gonna go into paraphonic mode and I've already turned all the oscillators down except for the third one, which means we're playing like a round robin through the oscillators, right? All I'm counting is what oscillator is playing, so. Smoothie's cool. Oh, duh. So turn up oscillator one, oscillator two. I'll set those to triangle wave shapes. Jeez. Another thing I notice is if you turn the oscillator levels all the way up, it starts, it kind of reminds me of the Moog CP3 mixer where it starts to kind of saturate the sound. So I kind of just set them around 12 o'clock. And again, one thing I love about the Pro 3 is that by default, all the oscillators, if I move this shape, they all by default have a little bit of slop on them. So I'll just turn that down to make it a bit more This just kind of um, pulls them a little tighter. Go down. So if we go attack up, release up. Now we need something to open up that filter every time we hit a key, right? So I'm gonna turn the filter envelope up a little bit. And our sustain is where that filter is gonna land. We'll do a little bit of attack. You might not hear the attack happening at all. This is because by default, the envelopes are not set to re-trigger until you've let go of all the keys, but this can be fixed. In miscellaneous parameters, re-trigger, boom. That means every time I press a key, no matter where, what other keys might be pressed, it's gonna still re-trigger all the envelopes. A little more, a little resonance, state variable. Here's a, what is it, CS50 trick, 80? 60 has it too, I think, uh, ring modulator. So ring modulator can get really crazy. Here it is. Uh, if I turn this up. Come on, come on, where are we at? By default, it's set to a saw. Do it to sine, really slow. Almost acts like, um, 
Is it tremolo? Is amplitude? But what's great is you can mix this in. So it's just a little bit in the background. playing four notes even though there's only three voices. Let's do a little bit more pluck sound, destination, filter cutoff. So there's not even that much harmonic frequencies when it comes to this, because you can hear with the filter all the way up, there's not much going on, but I can. So now if I bring this down. It's too fast. Okay, the three things that I actually want to talk about that are on here. The wave, the wave tables, that was just for the homie who brought it up in that story. Again, I don't know how those stories work. I hate saying this, but maybe you have to subscribe in order to get those. If you do, I really appreciate it. You know, I try not to push that stuff. I mean, it's we're just chilling, right? So um, maybe that's the cause of you possibly not seeing it. But if I would love to get more input from you, so if you can... Dope. I'd love to hear what you got to say. But what I wanted to talk about on the Pro 3, one thing that's cool to do with the wavetables, and this applies to a lot of synthesizers, is setting up, let me just go back to a blank patch. I'll turn down all the oscillators except the wavetable. And we'll choose a wavetable. Let's say this has a ton of range, right, when it comes to its wavetable. What I'll do is I'll set a sample and hold of, let's say, Let's do LFO one, just to be uh, clear. Destination, I want it to be sent to the shape of the wavetable. So what it's gonna sound like now is really random. But what's great with LFOs, majority of the time, you can set them to a frequency level of zero so that they don't move or they take really long to move. Then you're wondering why assign the LFO if it's never gonna move. If you go into LFO control, at least on the Pro 3, it's in the LFO menus on peak, you select wave reset. And this will then tell the LFO to change position, well, positions every time you hit the key. So watch. You can even see this reflected on the LED. Right? Go lower octave. Or let's go back to our favorite sequential one. Turn up a little bit of release. And I use this on a lot of tracks too. What's great here is I can say source LFO1, destination, filter cutoff. So now this is also gonna be opening up the filter cutoff. If I turn this up a little bit, you can see there, LFO1 to filter cutoff. Turn up the resonance so you can really hear it. Right, but we don't want it that much. A little bit of a pluck. Then to just round this off and kind of bring it back home, I would then introduce that patch I mentioned earlier, the triangle wave, just an octave down. Maybe turn oscillator three down a little bit or even higher up an octave. Let's try a different wave table. It just kind of helps keep things interesting. Say you have a really Ooh. Actually, 
This song basically uses this exact patch. I just went initialized and you can hear it in the bass, right? And that is just, just the A-E-I-O-U or whatever it's called, changing on top of just a really subby bass line. So using a sample and hold to then just modulate different parameters every time you press a key is almost like an idea that I stole from the Mimetic Digitalis, the little step sequencer that I use in my tiny palette case, this case here, um, but applied in a synthesizer form. And it's really simple and a lot of synthesizers have this. Another thing that's really fun to try when it comes to using a synthesizer, again, let's go blank patch. Um, we'll say paraphonic, boom, boom, boom. We'll get something pretty going. <laughs> I turned this as if it was one of these and just blasted it into the next dimension. Let's do pulse. So what I want to do now is create rhythmic movement. Again, a lot of this I've learned from diving into the modular world because it just really opens up a synthesizer for you. So let's actually add a little bit of slop. This is gonna be really pretty. So, this oscillator, I love the way this sounds. So how can I build up going two octaves? Right, this is fun, nerdy stuff again. So I'm gonna go to pulse width on one and two. What I need to do here is make sure that they are both synced to a tempo. And on top of that, I need to make sure that both of their waves get reset every single time I hit a key. So now if I go to LFO 2's shape, you can see that our step length is 32 steps. Let's just do four steps on one, and then we'll do two steps on the other. So now you can see that they're da, da, eh, uh, eh, uh, eh, uh. LFO 2, destination, the course tuning. Just to set this up, I'm gonna set it to unparaphonic mode so we can always hear oscillator three. Ugly. That's an octave. Here, same thing. Destination to the course tuning, but an octave as well. Right? And if there's a little bit of a popping sound that you don't like, yeah, that sound, you heard that. Blip. It only happens once in a while. I'm guessing it's, wait, do these have a slop also? Okay, they don't. But what they do have is this slew amount and this will just soften the edges of your LFO a little bit. So I'm gonna turn that up maybe to five on one and five on two. Dang, it's still there. Let's try it a little more. You hear it's So let's go back to one, set that a little more. Come on, man. Weird, it only happens on the first. Actually, it's kind of random. There almost is. Are the LFOs analog? David, answer. Anyway, back to paraphonic mode. Now we go like this, play a chord. Too much slew. We'll get rid of that slew right now. Oh, that's the one. Super plate. Rotating speakers, wild. That's what I wanted though. Okay, using rhythmic 
modulation on LFOs. Awesome, really fun, apply that to multiple things. Again, source, LFO one, destination, filter cutoff. Now there's a rhythm within a rhythm, right? Then we'll go to state variable instead. And then we'll say LFO2, instead of going to the filter cutoff, right? Source LFO2, we'll go to the state. Oh. Tight. But we lose a lot of the warmth because of this. Maybe not that much. It's too low. So now that we've gotten the sample and hold of three, you know, if we do that whole thing that we mentioned a second ago, and we got the rhythmic modulation, the third synthesis tip and trick thing that I really like that I originally got from my expander, RIP, sold it, it's gone, um, is delays on the envelopes. So if we listen to this now, and I turn up the filter cutoff amount, It gives off a little pluck, right? But what's cool is if I hold down aux one, turn up filter, turn the filter envelope down, I've now assigned auxiliary one, just by holding this and turning this knob, to send this auxiliary um, envelope to the filter cutoff. And if I just turn this up, I'm now sending that shape, right, to the filter cutoff. But check this, delay. This is really cool. This is basically what's the delay time of when I press a key and then that envelope goes off. And another thing to note is that this is also in the filter sections um, envelope right here, delay, but I just wanna do it here because then I can easily assign it elsewhere. So there it is, you heard that. And if this is set to re-trigger, this will happen every time you press the key because if it's not, say I do this, and it pops off, and then I press some more keys, it doesn't happen again. So this you can use to your benefit or to your demise. But if I turn that on, right, give it a little more attack, let it land a little softer. And then if we pile both of these onto the filter, taking this delay trick a step further. If we go and look at it, you can actually set it to loop. Psst, pff, tight. And here is maybe where you want it to be, the ridge trigger off. And what's cool here is that delay time acts as its resting point. Because most other synthesizers, when you turn loop on of an envelope, the release time is how long does it stay off before it repeats? But that's gonna be the delay time here, so. All right, if I shorten that. This is cool because you can start. Oh, 
or none. It's gonna be really fast. Use this as another LFO. Maybe assign this to the shape of oscillator three. Turn all these down. Sequential. The amount. There's just ugly happening in the background. Or again, you go back into here, no loop. Yo, that, this is so tight. Let's, let's apply that to everything. So source LFO one, go to all course, source LFO two, all course, and then both by plus 24. Does that mean that those are going to oscillator three plus a gajillion or 24 to 44, I guess? Let's find out. New key. Let's go negative 24, what does that do? And then here we'll just go nothing. I don't like that. Oh, these are still going to the filter cutoff, right? And then this variable shape. Oh my God, I'm sorry you had to hear that, jeez. It's cool. I mean, it's all just exploratory at this point. It's just, mess around with stuff and, you know, mess around with LFOs, mess around with envelopes, doing the decay time stuff or the delay. It's definitely not your typical delay of what you would expect inside your filter cutoffs. It's um, the delay of the key being triggered kind of thing. So there's a lot to be explored when it comes to synthesis. These are three of my favorite things, sample and hold. That's set to a really slow rate and key sync. So every time you hit the key, it sends a new value out, which adds a bit of spontaneity to things, but it's really usable when you set it to like a filter cutoff or something like that, because it's not changing the pitch value. It's just changing the tone and the texture of the sound, but keeping things the same. It's one way to easily keep things interesting, even though you're hitting the same note. From there, doing some tempo sync stuff, like if you had a drum machine going and this going at the same time, pff, forget about it, it's, it's so tight. And then on top of that, delay times and, or decay times, no, delay times, the delay of the envelope, because that's the decay uh, of being sent somewhere. And that's also a fun thing to do. But uh, yeah, thank you so much for coming by and hanging out. I appreciate seeing you. Uh, see you in the next one. Excited to see you there. If you want to support the channel, got some merch down here, but kicking it's more than enough. You already know the drill. Share the love, share the knowledge. Knowledge is power. Peace. <laughs>